Hey Builders, I'm Mr. Tariq, and I'm one of the leaders here at Grace Covenant Church of Sterling, Kid Builders. And I'm just checking in with you to go over our lesson from this past week that was titled, Brothers in Christ. Now before I ask our questions, let's do a quick review of the story. In fact, let's do this. Let's make sure we go grab our Bibles. I want you to grab your notepads and make sure you have something to write with. We're going to have a couple verses of scripture that we're going to go over. And I want you to write down those verses of scripture, but I also want you to write down anything that really stands out to you or that kind of captures your attention or thought. And then you can go back. You can read that again. Now, remember, when we're writing these things down, we're not just writing it down because Mr. Tariq says write it down. Um, but no, we're writing it down so that we can go back and reflect on it later. And when we're reading our Bibles every day, so we can exercise our spiritual muscle, we can think about these things and take them in prayer with us as we read God's Word um, so that He can strengthen us through His Holy Spirit. All right, so let's go ahead and hop into our recap. Now, if I had to sum up our Bible lesson, Brothers in Christ, the main point of the story would be Paul encouraged Philemon to treat Onesimus as a brother in Christ. Now, when Paul was with Onesimus, Paul was a prisoner in Rome. And Paul sent this letter that became the book of Philemon with Onesimus to Philemon, who lived in the city of Colossae. Now, did you know that Paul also sent another letter with Onesimus back to his friend? That other letter was written to the church at Colossae. And we can find that in our Bibles. In fact, it's what we know today as the book of of Colossians. So let's go ahead and jump into our recap here. Now, when we open up with our story, Paul was a prisoner under house arrest in Rome. And that in and of itself is pretty amazing. Paul is a prisoner, but he's not in the prison. No, he's in a private home with a guard under house arrest. And while he's a prisoner under house arrest in Rome, a man named Onesimus came to visit Paul. Now, Onesimus was a slave who had run away from a wealthy man named Philemon. And as it turned out, Paul was a good friend of Philemon's. So when Paul told Onesimus the good news, the gospel about Jesus and how he saves and Onesimus believed, Paul desired for forgiveness and reconciliation. That's kind of a larger word that means to be reunited or put together again. Um, so Paul desired for forgiveness and reconciliation between Onesimus and the Laman, who were now brothers in Christ as believers in Jesus. Now, Paul wrote a letter and he told Onesimus, to take it to Philemon. The book of Philemon is the letter written by Paul to his friend Philemon. And though Onesimus had become very dear to him, like a son or a brother, and Paul wanted Onesimus to stay with him in Rome, Paul nonetheless sent him back to Philemon with his letter. Now, Mr. Freak, when I approach this story, I kind of imagine how that conversation must have went between Paul and Onesimus when he said, hey, I wrote this letter to Philemon on your behalf. I want you to take this letter and go back to Philemon. And Onesimus was probably like, you want me to do what, Paul? You, you, want me to, you, want me, you want me to go back there? Do you know what they do to slaves who run away from their masters? Paul would have nodded his head yes, because he would have understood. And that's the power of the gospel. The Holy Spirit that we invite into our lives gave him that strength to go back and to deliver that letter. Now, in the letter, Paul urged Philemon to forgive Onesimus 
and treat him as a fellow brother in Christ. And that also requires the power of the Holy Spirit because Palemon would have looked at and said, this is my property. This is my slave who ran away from me. And you want me to do what, Paul? You want me to treat him like a brother? Now, in his letter, Paul also offered to even pay Onesimus' debt for him. Now, Paul could have used his authority as an apostle of Christ, an uh, appointed leader, to force Philemon to do what he wanted. But he didn't. Paul instead appealed to him as a friend and as a fellow believer. And he urged Philemon to treat Onesimus as if he were Paul himself, with both love and kindness. Now, Paul offering to pay Onesimus' debt to make peace between Onesimus and Philemon, um, in this way, Paul acted like Jesus. He modeled the, the actions that Jesus had given for us as believers to make peace between Onesimus and Philemon, just like Jesus made peace between God and humanity. Jesus took the punishment that we deserve rightfully for our sins, paying our debt so that we can be forgiven and then both welcomed back into God's family as brothers and sisters with Jesus. Now in our Bible story, Paul's letter serves as a reminder to us that everyone is equal before Jesus. And people from completely different backgrounds, like Paul, who was a former Jewish religious leader, Onesimus, a runaway slave, and Philemon, a Gentile slave master, are all brought together by the gospel under the lordship of Jesus Christ. And in light of God's love for us, we can be loving, kind, and forgiving to our brothers and sisters in Christ, all for the glory of God. So, that's our lesson recap. Now that we've gone through that, I have a few questions to see how well you, yes, I'm talking to you, were paying attention to the lesson. Now remember, if you have not had a chance to watch our lesson, I want you to ask Dad, I want you to ask Mom, hey, Mom, Dad, can you please find that lesson, Brothers in Christ? right here on our social media page, and then come on back and answer these questions with us. Now, remember, the best way for you to not miss these great Bible lessons about the gospel is to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, so that you don't miss these great lessons and these lesson recaps. So while we wave goodbye to all of our friends and they're going out to the lobbies to find their mom or dad, all of you who've already gone through that, hang out here with Mr. Tariq and the rest of our KB crew, and we're going to go ahead and get into our questions. So here's what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and get right to it. Let's get started with our first question. Question number one. Why do you think Paul offered to pay any debt Onesimus may have owed? Wow, why would Paul offer to pay a debt that he himself didn't owe? So, in studying our Bible lesson and watching the lesson video, we should remember from our Bible lesson that by doing this, by offering to pay that debt that Onesimus owed to his master, Philemon, Paul acted like Jesus. And Jesus is the one who makes peace between God and humanity. And in this way, Jesus took the punishment that we deserve for our sin, paying our debt so that we can be forgiven and welcomed into God's family as brothers and sisters of Jesus. And Paul was trying to model that as well as a follower of Jesus and offering to pay that debt to restore Onesimus into the family with his friend Philemon as a believer and follower of Christ. Now, when we want to understand what God is trying to show us, 
we can listen to him by reading his word. So what does God want you to understand and believe about why we don't have to be afraid of God or Jesus being ashamed of us? So let's look at our first Bible verse of scripture. And it comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter number two, and it's going to be verse number 11. Now, for this, we're going to go to the New Testament. We're going to go to the book of Hebrews. We're going to find chapter number two and verse number 11. Now, here's a fun fact. Our Bible lesson, Brothers in Christ, comes from the book of Philemon. And Hebrews, amazingly, is the very next chapter. Um, so, I already have it here in my Bible bookmark. So I'm going to go ahead and read that. You guys follow along with me. If you haven't gotten there yet, just jot that down on your notepad. Hebrews chapter number 2, verse number 11. And that reads, For he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one source. That is why he is not ashamed to call them brothers. Guys, there's, there's only one person who has the power to sanctify, and that is God. You see, sanctification, or in its action form as a verb, Sanctify literally means to set apart for a special use or purpose. So I want you to think about something that's really unique or amazing or like really special. And you don't use that every day. Like some people or parents have fine china. Like they put it up away. They don't use it every day. It's set apart for a special purpose. That's what sanctification means, to make holy again. God is setting apart, that is, to make holy or sacred. And Jesus is the one who sanctifies us. And that is why he is not ashamed to call us brothers and sisters. Jesus knows the price that he paid to set us apart to make us holy and sacred. And he understands that that price could only be paid by one who was already free from sin. Now here's our second question that we're going to get into. Question number two! Why should we be loving, kind, and forgiving to others? especially to other Christians? Oh, I love this question. Um, I really love this question, especially in light of uh, all the things that we see going on in the world today. Um, you have to remember, um, when we call ourselves Christians, we're followers, believers of Christ. We really are all one family. And sometimes we find ourselves divided. But as believers, we should be loving and kind and forgiving to other people, especially those people in our family. So in light of God's love for us, we also can be loving, kind, and forgiving to our brothers and sisters in Christ, all for the glory of God. It's not easy. I'm not going to try to trick you and say it isn't. It's hard. But that's exactly why it's worth doing it. Because it's the hard thing to do. And because it's the hard thing to do, it's also, in this case, the right thing to do. So let's choose to be imitators or followers of Christ's model. Now, our next verse of scripture to study and reflect on, it's going to come from the book of Ephesians in chapter number four 
and we're going to go to verse number 32. So we're going to go to, oops, I went back too far. We're going to go to the book of Ephesians, chapter number 4, verse number 32. All right, so Mr. Tariq is there. Ephesians, chapter number 4, verse number 32, and that reads, Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Oh, wow. Wow, that's powerful. So can we be honest for a moment here? In fact, here's what I want you to do. I want you to stop. Stop what you're doing. Put your pencils down. Put your pens down. I want you to close your eyes. Just listen to the sound of my voice. Now, I want you to think about, no, no peeking, no peeking. I want you to think about a moment in your life when someone did something or said something that hurt you badly. Do you got it? Okay, hold on to that thought for a second. I want you to think about something that made you so mad and so angry that you could never possibly forgive them what they did to you. Okay. I want you to open your eyes. And now while you're thinking about that, I want you to think about this next. That feeling that you have right now, that you're holding on to, that hurt that you felt, that's what we do to God every single time we sin. And the truth is, we sin a lot. If I'm being honest, I know I do. And I have to ask God to forgive me a lot. The truth is, that person that you were just thinking about, we are that other person. You are that other person. Mr. Tariq is that other person to God. God has every right to hold on to that hurt and we cause him to not forgive us. But, thank you, Father. He doesn't. God's heart hurts and longs for you so much to be reunited with you. He loves you so much that not only did he forgive you of what you did for each one of those sins, he chose to pay the very high price needed to make that happen by sending his son Jesus to die for you, for me, for everyone, so that we would have a way back to him. Think about that next time you wanna be angry and hold on to that hurt or that pain that someone caused you. And think about how God forgives us so generously we should definitely choose to be like our father in heaven forgive our brothers and sisters especially our brothers and sisters in the family of christ <clears throat> so here we're going to go to our third and final question question number three when someone becomes a believer how should we treat that person regardless of his or her past. Hmm. So when someone becomes a believer, he or she should be welcomed heartily with all of our passion into the family of God, regardless of his or her past. The Bible tells us that we are a new creature in God, in Christ. And I want to point out how God treats us regardless of what we've done in our past. When we trust in Jesus, we have full acceptance from God. Don't just say, mm, I'm going to kind of partly trust you until I see you prove it. No, God says, you're fully accepted by me. Now, the final verse of scripture that I want you to write down and reflect on is going to come from the book of Galatians. And we're going to go to chapter number three, 
and we are going to go to verse number 28. So Galatians 3, 28. Galatians 3, 28. So what does God want us to understand about how he views those who have become a part of his family, no matter what they've done or where they come from? <clears throat> so that verse of scripture reads, there's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither slave nor free. There's no male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. What a, what a beautiful message of hope that God gives to us. It doesn't matter if you were born as one of his chosen people or a person who's adopted into his family. It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. It doesn't matter if you're rich or you're poor. It doesn't matter what race you are or what nation you come from. As a believer, God no longer sees your past. He only sees his son Jesus inside of you. You inside of Jesus. So what will happen for all Christians in the future? One day, all Christians will see Jesus in his full glory and live with him forever. This is our hope. So for everyone here at Kid Builders, we love you so much. And remember guys, read your Bibles every day. I promise you, it will make a difference. We love you so much.